Nice. Hey, I'll tell you what, everybody. Welcome back to this week's show. We are out doing a little bit of walleye fishing, and I'll tell you, Tom, first one to score. We got Tom today from Vortex. We got Sawyer, the one and only. He's actually caught more fish than anybody already. He's just uh, letting, getting the junk fish out of the way. And of course, Archer up front there. I'll tell you what, there's nothing better than coming out and experience some great walleye fishing. And so when you look at what we have today, we got absolutely perfect conditions out here. You know, the problem with this body of water here, and today we're on Lake Winnebago, is that when the wind lays down, and we've had quite a bit of that, what happens, the water clears up like in a couple of days because of all the zebra mussels. And the weed growth right now is not really up enough where when you have them flat calm days and it clears out, where there's enough weeds to hide these fish. That's gonna change probably in the next week or two because our temperatures finally are warmed up. Our water temperature is running anywhere from 72 to 76 degrees. We're basically looking for a coontail. Uh, there is a little bit of milfoil out here and some other sand grasses that will hold some fish, but the coontail is typically what we're looking for. There's a couple different things I can do. When it goes flat, I'll come into the weeds once this weed growth starts setting up and I'll start pitching the pockets and catch my fish either on like a 16th or 8th ounce jig, a half a crawler or a leech, or you can actually go and start in certain areas where the weeds are a little bit more dispersed. You can start casting baits like, you know, you can use the shiver spoon, you can use Cleo's, anything like that will work out really well. Um, otherwise, what I'll do if it's calm out, I'll actually get the bottom bouncers out and I'll get off to the edge of them reefs and I'll start working anywhere from about 9 to 14, 16 feet of water and pull slow death or pull small spinners with a half a crawler or a leech and catch some fish like that. So you always have some kind of option, but today, today we have whatever option we want. just kind of moved here. Mark and fish, you know, when you look at that side imaging, it's amazing how many fish you can see on there. You know, and I've only got mine set to about 50 feet on each side. And uh, again, you know, you're marking a lot of fish. The water temperature did cool down a little bit, but now it's starting to build again. You know, it's amazing when, you know, you go from 85, 88 degrees and you have uh, the highs now are about 70, 72, which are absolutely perfect for me. But that water temperature did cool down a little bit. And yesterday the bite out here was absolutely on fire. So coming out this morning, I expected it just to be absolutely gangbusters. But as I'm seeing this water temperature warm up a little bit, no doubt before too long, it's gonna be on fire. Feels good, yep. I knew it was a wall. You can always tell when it's a walleye, for me, you know, again, having the opportunity to fish as much as I do. There you go, might have two walleyes going. Because I certainly was marking a lot of them. Tom, you want to shift that one way or another because that's definitely a walleye. I can see just the way it's coming in. That's a good fish, really good fish. There we go, got him. That's a nice one. Now. As I was saying just a little bit ago, you know, again, you're looking at really, you know, you look at a morning starting off and it's, you know, we're in the, we're in the summer here. I mean, the water temperature, we're up to 86 degrees. It just cooled down about two and a half degrees last night. And it's amazing, you got perfect conditions out here. We've been fishing for probably three hours now. And finally, the water temperatures are starting to get back into 73, almost 74 degrees and a few small ones to start with, and the sheephead started biting, that's usually the sign. If the sheephead aren't biting this time of year, you know something's off a little bit, but they started biting, and then the smaller walleyes are started biting, and then Tom just got this nice one. That's a perfect fish right there. That's about 18 inches, got a great build on them. You know, again, kind of going back to the Winnebago system, remember, it's a three fish limit. Uh, there's no size limit at all, but it is a three fish limit. Great job, Tom, thank you, man. Thank you. Perfect. Hey Arch, why don't you do us a favor? Why don't you talk a little bit about the new binoculars that Vortex has out? Now this is something very interesting where you actually have a pair of binoculars that's gonna retail for right around 100 bucks. Yeah, Larry, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, these literally just hit the shelves last week. Uh, just got them out into the stores. We've been working on them for a long time and really we just wanted to, to give everybody the chance to be able to afford a good, good pair of binos, good glass. 
uh, with the Vortex warranty. So it, it's a great pair. If it's your first pair of binoculars, you just need an extra pair to keep on the boat or in yeah. the truck. Um, they're going to have really good daylight performance, the Vortex warranty, uh, fog proof, water resistant, pretty much everything you need and nothing you don't. If you're looking for a pair, hit up your local retailer or uh, head over to vortexoptics.com, send us a chat or give us a call. That's awesome. Thank you, David. Nice. That's a decent walleye. Let's get a net underneath him. That's a little bit better fish right there. We'll take them all day long. Hey, our good friend Lance the Lightning has just uh, gave us a shout here. We were pitching jigs and said he was getting them pretty good on crankbaits and the wind really picked up quite a bit and uh, definitely got everything stirred up pretty good. So we're switching the cranks and first pass, got a decent one right here, nice job. What do you got, Sawyer? Come on, let's see a walleye, buddy. Oh yeah, it's a walleye, nice one too. Good job, perfect fish right there. Nice job. That's a good one. I love these fish like this when they're in the, that 15, 16 inch range. Exactly what you want to keep to eat, for sure. Right there, a little bit better one, yeah. There we go. I'm gonna give him the old flipperoni. You know, again, when you start getting the kind of conditions we have now where it's a little bit tougher to spot lock, you know, you have, you know, some people would call these four footers, but they're probably realistically two footers at the most out here. Um, throwing cranks and putting the drift sock out is another great way to obviously cover a lot of water. And you know what's gonna happen when these fish are gonna get pushed up onto these shallow spots. So what we're basically doing is, this is a pretty long reef right here. And basically what we're doing is we're coming through and trying to hit the high spots on this reef here. And it seems like every time you hit that high spot, we pick up one or two. The first pass through here, I tried a, a, a shiver minnow and I couldn't get, or a shiver spoon, and I couldn't get them on that. So obviously just switching it up to see if they wanted that. So good fish right there, I'll throw them in the box. Hey everybody, welcome back to our show today. I'll tell you what, the other day we were out here and we had a pretty good day. So we decided actually to film again today and this is definitely sponsor week this week. Uh, we've got Dan in the boat today from Magic Products and Gerilyn, the one and only. Hey, so let's talk about, ooh, I just had a bite there. Let's talk about what's new at Magic Products. And you know, actually Magic Products is, uh, Metalware is the mother company and uh, you know, it's Nesco, Chard. Oh, we have the Walt Coolers. The Walt Coolers, yep, that's another thing. And we have, uh, obviously, the Magic product line. That's awesome. Hey, are you gonna catch some fish today? I'm hoping. There you go. Nice job, Gerilyn. Got the first keeper. Ooh, Gerilyn. And Dan just missed one right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There he All right. All right. Yeah. Cool. Hey, there's times when you just make the wrong mistakes, and today we definitely made the wrong mistake. We ended up going north looking for some dirtier water and looking for more weeds, and we couldn't find it. We went all the way to the north end of the lake, got it, and then we started turning back around and coming back this way, and now we have back on some water. You can see all the, the big algae bloom here. You can only see that bait down about three, four foot, and right away the fish are biting. So again, looking for that dirty, dirty water, and again, no wind today, hardly at all. So you gotta do something to kinda combat that, and uh, pulling spinners off the edges of the reefs is definitely the way to do it. I tell you what, I have not had to do this yet this year, but it is time. A friend of ours is trolling in front of us and he's just pounding on them. And I'm done suffering for the day. No wind, we picked up a few fish on spinners, picked up a couple jigging, but sometimes it doesn't happen a lot. You gotta go with the flow. We're gonna break out the pointer boards and we're gonna start trolling. Okay, what we're gonna be doing is running shad wraps Clicker metal. So I'm going to tell you, Dan, put this back at 50 okay. feet. Okay. One thing I think the biggest mistake people make is they jump for the board right away. It doesn't matter if it's a spinner harness or crankbait. Let the boat do the work. 
The fish is, once he's hooked, he's good. Now grab that one, Dan. Okay. What's that one at? That looks like a walleye because it's pretty steady weight. So there's a good chance that this is going to be a walleye on this one. Yeah. One thing, again, I love about these church boards is they're so fast on hook, you know? Just one cam like that, like this, pull, pull the pin and away you go. Never snap the line when you're releasing it either. You don't want that jump because a lot of times what's going to happen is it's going to pop the fish right off. Now you're just going to fling them right in. Keep reeling, Dan. Yeah, perfect. Now that's a nice fish. Now look at the difference, too, between the few fish we caught jigging today and the fish that are out here. You know, what's going on is you got such a major explosion of different types of, of bugs that are happening. You can see the bugs all over the boat. And really, that's the big thing. These fish are out in the mud and they're just absolutely gorging themselves. This guy has got a lot of feist to him, too, but he's not going to have a lot of feist to him when he's got a Rapala fillet knife through him. But that's a good fish right there, 16 incher. Awesome. Hey everybody, we do this each and every week and no doubt we'll never stop doing it as long as we have this show. We want to thank all of our military men and women for the great service that they have given us and continue to give us, along with all of our firefighters, paramedics, and no doubt all of our law enforcement agents for the great service they also give, putting their lives on the line each and every day. Thank you for that. Also want to thank all of you hardworking men and women in this country. Keep things moving. Hey, it is a great day to be alive. And the best part is we're going to see you guys and gals again next week. And thanks for joining us.